Hey, all right, welcome to week 10. This is going to be our SQL lesson. Today we're going to go over some uh, new rules, some one of, I think, the most important uh, SQL you can ever learn, rollback and commit. Then we're going to go over update, and we're going to go over creating a view. Okay, let's go ahead and hop in, in there and see what we got. All right, so rollback. This is the single most important piece of code I think everybody should learn. And uh, the reason we learn this is because it allows you to undo a mistake. Uh, you delete a table by accident. You drop a table. You delete some records out of a table. You update and change some records to the wrong dates or something. If you're not using rollback and update, you're you're screw your SOL. You're out of you're in a lot of trouble. You know that's not, it's not there's nothing you're going to do to fix this problem. So it's got you know this is not good. So what we have is a function called rollback and commit, which allows us to basically undo a mistake. All right. The syntax is, is very simple. Uh, first, you have to start with a begin transaction and note the semicolon. Okay. So this is a line that's going to run itself. Then after the end transaction, you're going to run a command. Like I'm going to say delete star from table A. Once I do that, it deletes everything from table A. Now, if I decide, oops, that was a mistake, I type in rollback and it undoes it. Now we're back to how we started. So this basically this line never ran. If I go commit, it's going to keep the change and uh, we're going to be in trouble. You know, uh, I'm just going to keep the change of what we want. Not really in trouble. That's you use commit if what you did was correct, all right? And it's just good habit when you're doing any kind of updates or deletes or changes, altering a table, to do use this because that way if you make a mistake, it's, you know, one line, you fix it, okay? So let's go ahead. Let's take a look at this. Now, I've got a table here, and I'll go to SQL in a second here, but I'm going to delete from this customer orders tables where the order's 1,000, okay? So let's go ahead. Let's pop in, you know, let's, let's see this in SQL instead of just on the slide deck. So go ahead, change the view so you guys can see better. All right, so here we are. So again, I'm in my database. I'm going to select all from customer orders just so we can see. Okay, and there we have this order is 1,000, okay? So I'm going to start begin transaction. And now I'm going to say delete from this order where the order ID is a thousand. Now watch, I'm going to go in there now and I'm going to run this command again and look what happens. One thousand's gone now. It was there before. But if I hit rollback, if I say rollback and now I run my select again, there it is, it's back. Okay. Let's go ahead and see how it happens when we commit. Now, See, hold back the deck one second. Uh, all right, so that's rollback. Remember now, you must start your commands with begin transaction or rollback doesn't work, okay? If you just ran a delete command and then tried rollback, it's not going to work. So you have to make sure that that begin transaction goes before you do anything else. Okay, so just keep that in mind. If you didn't put begin transaction, you're you're out of luck. So committing, if what we did was good, we could do the commit command. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and pop back into SQL Server and show you. So let me change the view again for you. All right, so here we go. So we're gonna go to another table, this billing table. Let's just go ahead and take a look at it first. We're gonna select some billing. So I got this table and I've got five invoices. I'm going to delete invoice 28. So delete from billing where invoice equals 28. Remember, delete allows me to use the where clause. Truncate does not. Truncate just gets rid of everything. Okay, so begin transaction. Delete from. Now I go ahead and hit this a bit again. Select again just to look. And yep, it's gone. If that's what I want. I hit commit. Okay, so once I've done commit, I cannot roll back now. If I try to roll back, it's going to basically tells me that there's no more transaction because that commit just closed this transaction up. I'd have to have another transaction created, but this is done. So that's done. When you've done commit, it is now there. Okay. So remember, 
begin transaction. Make sure you got the semicolon there. Roll back, undoes your mistake, commit, commits it. And you, once you've committed, that's it. You can't roll back anymore. Okay. So that's roll back and commit. Again, I say those are the two most important code lines you're going to learn in SQL because they may save your job one day if you make when you make a mistake because we all make mistakes. Okay. Next, we're going to go into update. All right. Update is used to change the data in the table. Remember, we used alter last week to change the table. We want to rename the table, to add columns, remove columns, uh, change the data type of a column. We can use update. Uh, we can use, I'm sorry, alter. Update, on the other hand, that is data related. So what we do here, we say update the billing. And I'm going to set overdue to yes, where the invoice is 23. So the syntax is, is always is update, the name of the table, set whatever column you want to set, what value you want to give it, and your where. You don't need a where. I could say set column one to y, and it would just change all of them. But the where is limiting me to which one I'm doing, okay? So you actually don't need a where for an update column. I could literally say update all the overdues to, to no, and just it would clear everything, make, make sure it's not overdue. Or I could set all the amounts to zero, you know? But if I want to set specific ones, then I have to use the where column. So let's go ahead and pop in. And again, let's look at billing again. So we actually we got it up there already. <laughs> so now you notice 23 is not overdue. I want to set it to overdue. So I'm going to sit there and I'm going to say update billing. That's the table. Set over. Notice I don't have to say update table. I just say update billing. Like with alter, you had to write alter table. So it's a little different. Uh, Kind of one of the idiosyncrasies of <laughs> idiosyncrasies of SQL. Sometimes it's annoying, but eventually you figure it out. Uh, so update billing. Set my column to what value I want it to have. And notice I got the quotes up because it is a string. So it, this is and it's a one character string, but it's still a string. Where invoice is twenty three. Notice I don't need the quotes because I got a, that's a number. Invoice is a integer. So I run this. And now I can select from billing, and there we go. Now, just what we did before, watch this. If I say now, if I try this rollback now, watch what happens. Can't, there's no begin transaction, but now if I go here, begin transaction, if I can spell correctly, transaction. Run that first, then I set this, I'll set this to N. Run these. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the billing column again. And now it says N again, but I don't want that, so I'm going to roll back. And there we are, back to Y. So, again, anytime you're making changes to stuff, <coughs> this, this extra, it's two words. It, it saves you so much time in mistakes later. All right? So that is update. And finally today, we're going to go over views. A view is a basically it's a stored query. Now, you look at this query here on the right I put together. I got two joins. I'm just trying to get the student name, subject, and the name of the tutor all together here in this. Uh, if you had, imagine you had to run this every day. And believe me, I've run ones with much more joins than this. If, we're, if I had to run this every day, you'd have to type it in every day. That'd be a real pain. I mean, uh, Sure, you could load the code, but if some you're not in and somebody else has to run it, they'd have to find your code. A better solution is to make what's called a view. Now, a view stores all this information, and you can run it as a single line. So here in a view, what we do is we put the word create view, name your view. So I've create view, tutor info, as, then put the entire query I have in parentheses. And then after I've done that, now I can just type in select from tutor info. And that'll give me the same thing. And if the tables update, it'll always update for me. Okay. So that's how simple it is to create a view. It's just this couple words up here, create view as, create view, view name, and then as, and then put parentheses around it. And all your, uh, your query gets saved that way here. I'll go show you how it's done. 
All right, so first things first, I want to show you over here. Let's see if I can get these tables back. I might have to, you know, let me refresh this. We all know how. All right, so here's my database. Now, I have already did built this when I was doing, so I made this view already. So you can see I've got the code right there, and I'll watch you can do it. But you'll see here, I've got something after tables, I think called views, and there it is. There's my view, tutor information. You can open it up. It'll show you what columns there are. Uh, another cool thing you can do is you can right click, script views, create to, new window. So if you're not sure how a view was made, you know, let this do its thing. Uh, it gives you the command right here. So this is the, the same thing. This is how my, my view was made. Uh, it just added the DVO in front, which is just the schema, which we don't really change up here, so I wouldn't worry about it. But so that's it. So now. If I want to create this view right now, it won't let me because it's already there. So if I try to run this, it'll, I'll get an error as an object name that already could alter the view. I can change to alter and that would, you know, allow me to make a change. But I'm going to do just so quick reminder from last week. Drop view tutor info. Now, what should I do before I command this? Because just in case I make a mistake, let's go ahead and do this. Drop view tutor info. Okay, it's gone now. So now if I go back to here and I refresh. Ah, did I break something? Ooh, I got a lockout request. That's cool. I forgot about that. Yeah, that's what happens. We get a lockout request because I'm still within a begin transaction. Okay. Because this begin transaction still exists, so it won't nothing's being committed. So you'll get lockout requests, which are you know it's a way of saying hey, you still got to make a decision. But anyway, so I drop the view. If I commit it, if I commit, it'll actually make sure it never comes back. All right, so I'm just going to commit now, and that's gone. So now I did that. I can create a new view. Number one, drop. I dropped a view. I didn't delete or truncate a view. I dropped a view because a view is a database object. It's not data. Now I can run this command, create my view. And now when I refresh this, I shouldn't get any more errors. That went nice and quick, but the lockout was caused by the fact I had this begin transaction that I hadn't resolved. You have to resolve the begin transaction either with a commit or a rollback. And now when I go select star from tutor info, I get this, okay? All right, great. Uh, Thank you very much. This has been a quick lab, but I really want you guys to start on your project in this class. So uh, we'll go ahead. Uh, great. I can't wait to see you next time.